Okay, it is 6.02. I'd like to call the meeting of the Woodbury Select Board for December 11th, 2023 to order. Do have a motion? Yes, I will second the motion or make the motion? Make the motion. I'll make the motion. Okay, motion is seconded and the meeting is active. Any adjustments to the Select Board agenda as published? Had one I was gonna put in. I don't want to make this meeting nope, longer nope, and hold please. you up. Okay. Um. Do you want me to tell you what it is? Yes, please. So, um, I wanted to talk about getting going on the process of replacing the boiler in the town office um, because it was brought to our attention that it's a safety issue. Um. So, that's it. Okay. Um. Can we put that? We'll put that. Can we do that after the town clerk's report, mm -hmm. please? Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Any other adjustments to the current select board agenda? Okay, hearing none, uh, we have the approval of bills and payroll orders, which we have in front of us. We are going to work on these immediately after the meeting. The minutes from the November 27th meeting? Don't have them. Oh, yeah. We do not have those, so they will also have to be approved after the meeting. Any other general public comment? All right, so um, next on the agenda is Steve Murphy for Woodbury Library Board. Um, he's not available at the moment, so we're going to move. Oh, here he is. Hey. Hello. Steve, we're going to make you wait for a minute. Sure. Is that all right? Sure. All right. Uh, Ms. Brandy, can we do the town, well actually, uh, Mrs. Durkee, can we do the town treasurer, t town clerk's report, please? Yeah, I've gotten a lot of the appropriation requests in for the town report. I'm waiting on maybe a half dozen. Oh, And great. then we should be good for that. That's terrific. Yep. And my reporting is up to date. Um... That's basically what I've been working on is my town report stuff and the recording. Great. So. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, Ms. Brandy, could we do the treasurer's report, please? Do we want to sneak in the boiler? I would like to sneak in the boiler with that. Oh, with mine? With yours. I don't know anything about it, but. Okay. Um, um, well. Balance sheet, financial statement due to due from um, that I passed out. Uh, cash receipts over the last two weeks took in $19,653.38 um, of delinquencies, copies, recording, vault fee, sale of lots for the cemetery, etc. Um, expenses, payroll the last two weeks, $10,537.43. Accounts payable today, fifteen thousand eight hundred seven dollars and thirty six cents. I transferred twenty thousand from the money market over into checking to cover our bills. Um, and of course, lots of goodies going on with the budget. Um, other things. Yeah. Unless there's any questions. Is that a normal rate of transfer this time of year? Or are we heavy? Um, not really. Um, not really normal? It's not a heavy. Not really um, heavy. Right, until 
more things start flowing in. And of course, with a lot of our bills um, are, is FEMA oriented. Yes, ma'am. So that's why it's this is a so high. Yeah, okay. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Smith? Mr. Murphy, would oh, you? Boiler. Oh. Uh, well, should I sneak that in to hers? We can sneak it in now. We were going to sneak it in. Let's sneak it in. I'll be super quick <laughs> with it. that. So the insurance company recommended that we replace the boiler. Um, Robin, myself, and Diana went to the town office just to kind of like look at the work that needed to be done and kick around ideas of prioritization for it. Um, and Gary Clark, who I guess is a plumbing system, heating system expert, Knowledgeable. came and um, looked at it with us. So one of the things that he noticed is the boiler, the fire brick inside the firebox is cracked, which he said is a danger. Um, I asked him how immediate of a danger, and he didn't really give an answer, but it seems like it's something that needs to be prioritized, especially because it, you know, we haven't even gotten the ball rolling, right. so I don't know how long the process will take. So we are going to get, I think, if I'm reading this insurance report right, we're going to get a little over two grand to replace the boiler, which doesn't really seem doesn't like it's going to be enough, but I don't know because I haven't priced them. Um, so I guess I was kind of looking for everybody's blessing to start the process, talk to Gary more, get some pricing. I've got a plumber I could reach out to, like just kind of start um, shopping, I guess. Um, yeah. So our insurance was going to give us $2,000? If I read this right, and I have it here. So Gillespie signed off saying it was great, and it was in good shape, so... So maybe we could get another yeah, opinion, but get, like when but Gary looked at it, he was like, oh yeah, the fire brick's cracked. And I was like, well, can we just replace the fire brick? And I'm, this got a little foggy for me, but I'm pretty sure the answer was yes, but that due to the age of the furnace, it maybe didn't make sense. I could verify that with him. Okay. Um, but I think what, what we kind of came to at the end of the conversation was that it should be replaced. The entire and system. The, well, just the, um, just the boiler itself, the furnace itself. The, the so like the furnace. ducting is fine, like all that stuff is, he had some suggestions for improving it, um, but there were no issues. Um, it was really just the furnace and I feel like it's... Well, I would... Oh, here we go. Uh, so I don't know, I may not be reading this right, but I took it that this is how much money they're gonna give us to remove and replace it, which doesn't really seem like a lot. a lot. And that's for the, so this is the duct work, but according yeah. to Gary, it really didn't need anything duct work wise. But maybe we can steal from some of the other items that are less important, was kind of what I was thinking. Mm, okay. Question, I wonder yes, if please. Um, something like Efficiency Vermont or something like that would have a program to replace furnace boiler that might be more energy efficient, blah, blah, blah. And there mm -hmm. might be some money available from them for that. Um, yeah, I could, I guess, reach out to them or if anybody else has worked closely with them and um, wants to do that, it sure be worth looking into. I guess my only concern is if we postpone it long enough, like there's this possibly dangerous situation that is, you know, just like still there. Well, I think I could send an email to somebody at efficiency. You know, I think that we should also pursue some quotes. Okay. At the same time. So I'll reach Michael, out to Gary then. If you are willing to do that, that'd be great. If you're willing to yeah, do that, no, that'd be great. Cool. And I'll, I'll go through Gary. He offered to sort of be our like point person. That would be this, terrific. Expert, so. Let's, let's um, see what he can get for a quote for a replacement. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I think that, that would be the next best step. Okay. To be honest. Um, because replacing that system is not going to cost us $2,000. Mm-hmm. 
Lucy, what I would do is probably CC you on that, or maybe the whole select board, and then okay. I would select. Uh, yeah, I would do the whole select board if you're yeah, willing to, okay, Michael. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, Michael. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so we'll back up a little bit. Uh, Mr. Murphy, would you do the Woodbury Library Board requests, please? Sure. Here I printed some out to you, Gus. Okay. <laughs> Steve, I got your email, but it was like a minute before I left for here, so okay. I'm sorry. For, you probably haven't even seen my response. So. No. Thanks so much. Any else for Sure. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, let's see. For the library. All right. The first, the first item I'd like to talk about is the budget. We approved the proposed budget at our last meeting, and I submitted that to Brandy at a request. Um, first, I'll just briefly recap the activities of the library. I think we've had a very good year. Starting back uh, last town meeting, we had a good promotion of town meeting, civics and government, cooperation with the school. We had the mock town meeting at the elementary school here. Um, throughout the year, Myrna, the library director, has been great in inviting, welcoming the community in. Um, some great programs, the pollinator program, um, there have been uh, poetry readings, uh, we had a, a reading from a, a local writer on Dave Morse, who's a, a sports journalist. Um, lots of coordinated activities with the school. Um, we had, well, uh, we had we had a, we had a great pie breakfast back in the spring. Um, we had movie our movie night series over the summer, and now we just started developing a project again in coordination with the school um, on the subject of auto racing, and we hope to we hope to have the. The culmination of this with an event at the library, uh, not at the library, sorry, at the school, uh, where students can demonstrate their works, like an open house demonstrating their project, and with a featured speaker. Uh, hopefully, someone who's a, a prominent rate auto racer in Vermont, Governor Scott, uh, we, we may be sending an invitation. So. Um, so we've got a lot in the works. I think we've had a good year. So now I'll just get to the numbers here with the budget. Um, we are requesting an increase this year over last year's budget of $1,850. And I'll explain that. Um, over the past, I believe it's eight years, we have been drawing from uh, a donation which was, which was made through the Eleanor Angel Fund. I believe it was made in 2015 for $25,000. So I believe we've apportioned about $5,000 per year. Um, and we've got more mileage out of that grant because our activity slowed down during COVID. So we didn't draw down 5,000 every year. But looking at our budget, this budget year, 24, we anticipate using the remainder of that fund, and that's $2,555. Um, so that essentially won't be there next year. So we're short in our operations of $2,555. Uh, we looked over the, the budget, all of our expenses, and we think that we can, we think that we can provide adequate services um, with an, with eighteen hundred and fifty dollars of that twenty five fifty five. I I I think the difference there, why you might ask, why didn't you ask for twenty five fifty five if you if you're not gonna have that next year? Um, I think we we are anticipating um, having a little extra in the budget um, left over from um, salaries, wages, so there's some difference there. So I think most, if not all, of the services will be kept at the level. So that's 
that's that. Um, and we we itemized on the budget um, uh, where we will be applying that 1850 uh, in lieu of the, the Eleanor Angel Fund. Uh, computer expenses, uh, computer maintenance, books, um, e-books, and programs. So, any questions about the library in general or the budget specifically? No? Okay, so we, we submit that for your approval and then on to the town for their consideration at, at town meeting. So thank you for the thank you for the detailed budget. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, the next item let's see here. Um, that's to request your support at this point for a potential application for a grant. And I'll explain that grant. And well I'll explain the grant and what it what it will be used for. The grant um, will be provided by the federal government to the Vermont Department of Libraries to administer throughout the state to Vermont Libraries. We are a municipal library. I don't know if it also applies to private libraries. That's, um, guess that's beside the point right here. So the Vermont Department of Libraries will be administering these grants um, some of the purposes of these grants are to ensure that libraries c continue their operation. So it could be for maintenance of the structure of the building, the roof, the foundation, the exterior. Um, some of it is to Im improve air quality. Some of these funds are a portion from COVID relief. Um, so there are, there are a variety of purposes for these grants. And we, we believe that we would qualify. Some of them are for small rural libraries, so we certainly meet that. Um, so anyway, we considered our needs. I know we were here, it was back in the spring, to talk about the, the potential of this grant. And at the time, we, the board, declined to take any further steps until we had considered it more. So we have. We've considered it more. We've looked at the uh, criteria for the grant. And there's really two tracks here for, for this application. One is um, practical. One is aspirations. Okay, so I'm here to talk about the practical one. The aspirations are for potential uh, you know, maybe a, an enlargement, maybe enclose the front area so patrons can put their boots there during the winter. Myrna talks about how during the winter there's a lot of um, mittens, hats, snow pants, and gloves that just kind of pile up in, inside the doorway. But So that's the aspiration. I'm not here to talk about that right now. I, we haven't made a headway on that. But on practical matters, okay. Practical matters. So we're talking about maintenance, maintenance of the structure. Okay. Um, we've had two assessments, inspections done. The first was by House Right Solutions, a fellow named Harrison Bush. Um, he came out. It was a complimentary inspection. He came out in August. He wrote up a report, um, and he ultimately concluded that. He, he couldn't be helpful to us. I, I believe he's based out of Waterbury. The distance was too far, and he specializes more in um, interior systems, um, HVAC, air quality, and so forth. He does have knowledge of, of construction, general construction, but he thought that he wouldn't be the best fit here for this project. So we asked Larry Eldred who is the former longtime custodian of the school and the superintendent of buildings in the uh, school district, the elementary school district. It's now called Mountain View. It used to be called Orleans Southwest Union Elementary School District, OSUESD. So we talked to Larry Eldred. 
who has a long um, and very detailed knowledge of these buildings, the school and this building. So he came over and did an inspection, and his findings were largely consistent with Harrison's. And this is what this is what we'd like to focus on here, talking about these practical matters for the building. Um, the first, these are repairs. Larry lists these as needed repairs and suggested upgrades. The first one is these two doors. The, these doors we can see right without getting out of our chair. The bottom of that door is rusted. There's a there's a gaping uh, crack in the side of that one. Um, some of some of the rusting here and the wear on this door is due to the grating in the back. Over time. Um, leaves falling, grass clippings getting blown up against the building. If we were to walk around the building, uh, if there weren't snow there, we would see that the grading of, of the ground itself has come up and it's, um, it's starting to rot some of the, the, um, the siding boards down near grade. So anyway, so back to the doors. Um, Larry concludes that these two doors should be replaced. Um, in, we, we agree, you know, the library board agrees. Um, and there's molding around the door that's worn too. So number two is remove eight to 10 inches at the bottom of the exterior, the cladding around the building, and improve it, upgrade it with some flashing so we don't have a repeat of this problem. Um, so it'd be some metal flashing and drip cap and a splashboard. So, these are, uh, from my understanding, uh, standard construction techniques, and we'd, we'd apply them here. This building has held up great over the years. It's constructed by our neighbors. Um, people in town made this building at a time when, when they needed to expand the school, so um, we feel uh, a duty to preserve it. So, so there we go. So some of the trim boards around the exterior, um, gable vent at the south end of the library. Um, just by, by the way, I just want to tell you, as part of this inspection, I went up into the attic. Um, it's very orderly up there. <laughs> if you ever get a chance to <laughs> go up in the attic of the library in the community room, jump at the chance. The cables are neatly stapled to the rafters. There's blown in cellulose insulation. Someone cares. Someone cares about, about this building. So anyway, gable vent up there. We, uh, I'll just say, Michael will probably know about this. We needed to have the roof replaced on this building two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, the roofers found that there was no rotting with the decking, the plywood underneath the shingles. So every it was sound up there and that indicates that there's proper ventilation that moisture isn't getting trapped up there and rotting that that decking so good job whoever whoever set that up so the, the attic's in good shape gable vent um i don't i don't know why larry suggested that i could let you okay I know why. all I right okay him. here uh, we go i believe it was at the suggestion of the guy whose report is in here, uh, Harrison. Okay. I think he mentioned that Harrison had mentioned it, but he also thought that it would be a good idea. Okay, okay, okay. Belt and suspenders, I guess. Okay. Um, gable vent. Seal and caulk the exterior and repaint. Again, it doesn't take much just walking around the building to see that over the years the, the painting is worn, it's chipped in places, um, and there's, I'd say some, some places moderate, but mostly minor decay in some of the wood and trim, but some caulking and paint would preserve the rest of what's there that's intact. Um, regrade it, the next one is northern. North and the eastern side of the community room should be regraded to allow better drainage. And that would also, or could also include a French drain and what they call as daylight. Essentially, put a drain in, run the pipe off the back of the bank so it's grading down near the, the rink back there, right over the bank. Um, so, grade that and um, while we're doing... While, while 
That's about an eight. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Larry said there's some other potential repairs, but we didn't we didn't think it, it rose to the level of um, addre addressing right now. For example, um, you could excavate more around the slab and apply insulating foam, but Larry said it may uh, it may cost more than you'd see in a in a return, in, in any gain, it might, co might be costing me more in the long run than it's saving me. So anyway, so, so there we are with some improvements. And then if you flip over that page, we we'll go over to the costs. Um, Larry said, uh, and I should say, I should say, Larry compiled this estimate free of charge. He, he donated his time. Um, in, in putting this together and we, we thank you Larry for that um, we, we in the course of, of considering this we asked him if he'd be interested in being a clerk of the works because we on, on the board of trustees don't have expertise and we think it would be beyond, beyond our ability to manage this project so he said that he would, he would be interested in that so if we look at the estimates here for this work, um, the total is two twenty thousand five hundred dollars. Larry said, budget in approximately one thousand dollars for her for his services as clerk of the works. So we're we're at about twenty one thousand five hundred that we would potentially seek in a grant from the Department of Libraries. And I say potentially because the grant uh, applications have not been released yet. They're anticipated to be released at the end of December, so just in a couple of weeks, or at the beginning of the new year. So I just wanted to come here and essentially give you an update on this and ask, because it's the town's building, it's not the library building, so ultimately the select board has authority over this project. Um, ask if you, if if we can proceed, based on these these estimates and the scope of work. And by proceed, I mean uh, write the grant. Well, write the grant and see if the, what the conditions are in the grant. So before we submitted any grant, we would come back here and say, okay. We've gone through the grant, we've nearly completed it, or we've just begun, and here, um, you know, here's what we're anticipating. So, I'm here to, to ask if, um, well, first, if you have any questions. Looks like you had a question, Michael? Yeah. Is there a match, a town match with the grant? We don't know. We don't know. I, I can say this, though, that the, the Department of Libraries, um, they had some information sessions. Um, there's, a, there's a video online which I watched where they're explaining the purpose of the grant um, and they were really encouraging in libraries to come out because this is, um, you know, it's, it's a once in a, once in a great while occasion where there's just going to be this much federal money coming to the state to, dis to disperse to the library. So they're really, really encouraging and they said, um, you know, like I said, there were various purposes for this grant, so um, we, we looked at that and we think we might be eligible. So um, we, we don't know about matching uh, conditions right now. I would fully support that. Okay. I would as well. Okay. Uh, my only other question is, does the, the writing on the grant stipulate that infrastructure is okay? I believe I believe it is. I believe that that's. Do you mean is that eligible for a grant infrastructure? Yes. I believe it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've looked at that's this not, many times. The, the it's not as common that infrastructure is part of one of these grants. Yeah. Like so said, if this the, is the case, we should take advantage yeah, of it for sure. One of the purposes sure. is to to preserve the structure. Okay. To keep the libraries in place and. Um, yeah. Any more questions? I I do have two two more points. 
Lizzie, I just want to ask you, I sent you an email. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yes, your your question was, the answer was yes. <laughs> and I'll, I'll explain my, what my question was to Lizzie. Um, Larry, in getting this quote together, had a difficult time getting contractors to, to answer his call and to come out and give him quotes. I, 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 I don't think that's unique to Woodbury. I don't think people are not wanting to come to Woodbury to do work here. I think there's just a general shortage in the area. People are busy. Um, but someone that did answer his call to, to get an idea of the cost in this was Lizzie. So um, I think it's important, and I think you do too, just for transparency here to say that some of this estimate is based on some, some input or quote you gave to Larry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. So... That's that. And the second point I just want to bring up, we don't need to we don't need to get in too far into this tonight. We can come back on another time and talk quite a bit about this, is the fact that the school through the memorandum of understanding with the town manages the community room here. The library is independent over there. The town owns the building but the school leases, I'm sorry, the school district leases both the school and through the memorandum of understanding this room. So that's something I think we could work out cooperatively. I can say, um, you know, in my experience on the board, working with the school has been great. The um, administrators, the teachers, and the facilities, um, uh, you know, the maintenance. We, we've we've all been working cooperatively, just as we hoped we would years ago when the when the school district merged and we decided to to go with the lease rather than conveyance of the property. <laughs> That's a whole other issue. But uh, so it's been working well, and and I'm confident that it can continue to do so, and we can find a way if we get this money to work on the building. <coughs> Mr. Gray? In the memorandum of understanding that you just mentioned, the town is responsible for the upkeep of this building. Okay. Not the school. Oh, so it might not be an issue at all. It shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Okay. Any, any more questions or comments on that? Just a thank you for all the work that you guys do. Yes, yeah, thank the you so much. Stuff you put together for the community. Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It really is. Um, I'm not done. Uh, this is quick. Okay. Last year, before the pre-town meeting forum, and that is usually the, the weekend preceding town meeting, the select board convenes a, a, a meeting. I don't know if it's technically a meeting. We called it a forum last year to discuss the agenda where the community can come and ask questions and maybe debate some of the stuff, but it's there's no voting that happens there. It's an informational session where people can talk. And last year we, we had it at the town hall. Unfortunately, there was a big storm the night before, but some brave souls, <laughs> some hardy Woodburyans came out, and we still had a pretty good group. At, I, I forget. I think we got together at 8 o'clock. But town government talk, it's intended to really talk about the experience of either serving in town government or interacting with town government. Not so much the administrative stuff, but just the human experience of it. And they're, they're intertwined, but um, it, it, it's, I think, a time to acknowledge that you guys at the tables up here are, are doing like sometimes very difficult and thankless work and um, and it's a, it's it's nice to understand what you're doing um, and acknowledge and appreciate that so anyway I'm, I'm here to ask if we can again if the library can again sponsor and hold a town government talk in the one hour preceding the pre-town meeting forum I don't see any reason why not. I think it would be great. Okay. I enjoyed it last year. Great. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, finally, finally, <clears throat> as your town moderator, I would I would like to, um, and I say I would like to because the the meeting um, is under the authority of the select board, and then further it's administered by the town clerk. Um, and moderated by the moderator. I, I would like to uh, have a special guests or attendees to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. In preparing for last year's town meeting, I went back and watched videos at HCTV, thank you, um, and at one of them we had two Boy Scouts lead the lead the assembly in the Pledge of Allegiance, and I, 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 I felt it was very moving to have uh, uh, honorees at that special moment in the meeting to to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So uh, I don't I don't have anyone uh, right now, but I just I just wonder if I could go out and seek some some honored attendees to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'll come back and seek your approval for that. I think we'll take that under consideration. Sure, I guess, yeah. Right? I mean, I, I think it sounds great. It sounds I'd be totally happy reasonable. to approve, okay. but... Okay, all right. And last item. Um, this is, this is following guidance in the Secretary of State's Handbook for Moderators that, uh, that advises moderators to work with the select board uh, in informing the questions that are on the agenda for the meeting, not in a substantive manner, not the substance, but in order to make the procedure at the meeting smooth. And I'm here... Um, again, based on my experience at town meetings and watching past years of videos, there are, there are predictably some points at the meeting where procedurally we get hung up. And I believe that people are not there to hammer through procedure and Robert's rules. They're there to, to get to the heart of the matter. So as your moderator, I want to clear the way for people so they can get through the procedure and get to the and get to the substance. I think that's that's one of my responsibilities as moderator. So, a couple of questions that perennially come up on our agenda can't be answered the way they're phrased. And one of them is, what action shall the town take in regard to the printed report? Uh, members of the assembly at some point, or the moderator says, well, there's no question to answer here. What do we do? Well, then we need to amend the question. It's not even... A, we have to amend the question. So before we can even get going, and certainly before we can finish, we just need to amend the structure of the sentence itself the, the, by saying, shall the town... We usually end up at this point... Shall the town approve the printed report with the amendments as stated, you know, previously? There are usually some amendments that are made, some revisions and so forth, but I just want to advise you that that's, in my opinion, one place where we can make an improvement. Just come out by saying, shall the town approve the printed report? And, as moderator, I'll say, this is usually the point in the meeting where People can make suggestions if there has been a, an error in math, if someone's name is spelled wrong, errors and omissions, we can correct them by amendments here. But it, by, by phrasing it as a question, we can answer with a yes or no. And ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Um, it can get us, get us to the heart of the matter quicker. And another one that usually follows that same form that can't be answered right out of the gate is what amount shall the town apportion for the highway budget or the general budget um, it's it's we usually end up flipping our books open and looking at a number that's 
already in the report. It's part of the budget. So I don't know if it, as a practical matter we can put that right right into the into the article itself. Again, that that could save us time where we then have to sometimes by unanimous consent turn to the select board, turn to somebody to offer an amount to place in that essentially blank. So the only glitch with that is they have those things get approved at the meeting. At the meeting. So we can't, and so the, it's double dipping. So your town report, and it can't have everything listed twice. If it's listed twice, technically they can come back and ask for it twice. So if we prove it at the meeting and it's in the town report printed that way, we're approving it twice. So those articles that get approved at town meeting are not in your budget. They are removed from your financial statement, so they're not calculated twice. That's why, yes. Well, what, what if, well, I, I won't take up more time here. Maybe we can come back to it, because I did a search last year to see if any other town phrased their budget question like this, and in my research I could find none. And sometimes it's good to be unique, and I think our town is unique in a lot of the best ways, but I just want to make sure that we're not being unique in this, in this, uh, in this instance, um, for the wrong reason. So, uh, I'll 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 do some more research and talk to you about it. I'll see if there's. Well, when we yeah. start typing up the articles, yeah, we should all meet that way. Yeah. And Great. You could confer with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Good um, one. So that you're legally unique. Okay. Um, I'll check the Secretary yeah. of State's office also. Okay. Yeah. Those are two good places to. Great. Okay. That's so, so if yeah. you had wording, Stephen, um, that you could share with us, the board and Robin, they could submit that to the LCT, okay. and, and they would um, the lawyers there would give a judgment on it. Great. Okay. And again, all all this is intended to avoid unnecessarily unnecessary procedural stuff, just so we can talk about the. The meat. Well, uh, we gotta uh, keep the moderator cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want any more. I have enough trouble getting through it. I don't need more. So thank you very much for hearing me out here tonight. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Um, Mr. Gray, would you please give us uh, the start of your updates? So what I'd like to do is, is start with the, um, the local hazard mitigation um, plan. Uh, the uh, award amount of money that the town, and actually a, a lot of towns in Vermont got, or just got notified about, and then move on to the bylaw modernization grant, and then the two road issues, so we can kind of slide into Alfie's report. Thank you. At the same time. So um, the local hazard mitigation plan um, will be outdated as of February of next year. Um, and in hindsight, we probably should have started working on it a year ago, but um, as long as we're working on it, we're still okay. Um, and the importance of that um, plan is that that's how we qualify for FEMA money. Um, and this, this particular um, hazard mitigation plan is kind of overseen by FEMA through the Vermont Emergency Management Department. Um, so VEM, Vermont Emergency Management Department, has been waiting for FEMA to award money to the state so that they could pass it out to the towns. Um, so we um, have been awarded um, $9,862.50 um, towards any work um, funding for the work on the um, revision and reapproval of the plan. Um, it's a 75, 25% match, so FEMA will give us 75%, and then the town has to come up with 25%. Um, the local match would be $3,287.50, so the total for the um, project would be $13,150. Um, our town match can be um, a kind of an in-kind thing with 
any volunteer or town staff that are involved with it, we would keep a record of their time, um, and that would count towards the town's, the town's match. Um, Skip and I worked on it uh, the last time. It's due to be renewed every five years. Um, I vaguely remember the process, um, but it's similar to any other, like a town plan, or if there's, we would be doing some surveying um, just to get um, a sense of what people would want to have in there. I would hold hearings. Um, it has to be eventually a draft written that's um, vetted, um, probably by somebody from the Vermont from Emergency Management, um, has to be approved by the select board, um, and then eventually uh, FEMA will approve it at the end. So anyway, um, uh, so, so we have this money, um, and it would behoove us to get started on it. Um, as soon as possible, maybe after town budget work and the holidays are passed. Um, and what I'm thinking is, is trying to find people in town that would be willing to be on a committee to do the work. Um, select board, I mean, last time it was basically Skip and I, um, as select board members, we were both on the select board then, but we have a emergency management director now uh, who does like, would like to be on it. Um, I can think of a couple of other people, but I was hoping that the select board might come up with some other names or um, if there's any other names suggested here tonight, uh, I would be willing to make phone calls. Um, a couple other, we do have a couple like Norman Eckton, we might be able to convince him to help. Um, Skip might be willing to help, but he's pretty busy with FEMA, and I don't want to intrude on his time too much. But um, and I would love to have some some younger folks involved. Or like, well, I think Diana mentioned that she might be interested, but I'm not sure. So um, yeah, so that's that's going to be uh, a project for um, for next year. We'll have basically. Um, a year to do that um, and I'm not saying that we would use or need all of the money that's uh, been awarded to us um, but whatever amount we get from FEMA we would have to come up with a match of 25 percent so, so that's pretty much it for the the local hazard mitigation plan if there are any questions at all or, Good. Okay. So moving down the list of the bylaw modernization grant, um, which is something we have discussed with the select board, uh, got <coughs> approval to apply for it. Um, so at some point in December, which is kind of halfway there now, um, we should get some notification about whether or not um, we would be awarded the grant application that we submitted. We submitted a, a, an application for $20,000, um, and that's a 10% town match. Um, and again, it can be in kind um, for uh, volunteer um, folks. And this grant is basically to um, help us get started on, um, and if we're lucky, cover the work of revising and um, getting uh, renewed approval for our, the town's zoning ordinance, um, which was last done in 1973 with a few small amendments, so it's kind of outdated. Um, we did, in the application, we were <coughs> greatly assisted by the Regional Planning Commission, and there was a, a check on the application, would you want to have um, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission serve as your agent? Yes. Um, so we did check that. Um, so uh, we will be working closely with um, CBRPC in, in the work on the zoning ordinance um, revisions. Um, and again, it's a similar process to the town plan or for this local hazard medication plan, getting input from folks in town, pulling hearings, um, and um, 
and then you know taking information that we gather from the town folks and revisions um, blah 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 and, and of course having all of the things that uh, the state would want to see in there too make sure that those are there um, this this grant application was pretty much it was obvious that the focus was on housing and um, which is much needed so in the grant application you know um, we kind of push the housing part of the town plan and, um, and the fact that the zoning ordinance um, doesn't address some, some of the more lenient um, or really doesn't address anything beyond um, any supplemental housing um, for property owners. So, but I, I'm not really sure if we'll get this grant or not, um, especially with the housing em em emphasis, but we should know before the month is over. Um, and then if we do, it, it will be the planning commission that will be, will be doing the work on that, on the zoning ordinance, which we're all really thrilled and just can't wait to <laughs> get especially the contentious hearings. Of, um, so, any questions about that at all? Yeah, thank you. So, all right, so down to the road stuff. Uh, let me get my glasses out for that. So the first thing, um, let's see. So I'd like to talk about the Valley Lake Road culvert because um, there's some new and significant things happening with that. We did finally get um, the design uh, work from um, Ruggles Engineering, Nate Seacard. Um, so that, and uh, we have a deadline of the end of this year, the end of this month, to submit the, uh, the grant um, report so that the town can get reimbursed. Um, Fortunately, we just have to copy a couple of copy of the invoice and a couple of checks that Brandy's written, and we send it to Logan Perrin at District Seven, and he will do the rest for us. So it'll be very easy to meet our deadline. <coughs> Brandy and I are going to meet this week, and uh, we'll do that. So, um, what Nate came up with uh, for the total of the project um, is two thousand two thousand seventy two hundred. $78,524. So, um, and then his charge for the design work was uh, $5,000. So, um, and it's a 10% match, so the town is going to be paying um, $500 towards that grant. Um, and this is with District 7. Um, we are now part of District 6. So this is an old grant award that we received that's been three years in the, uh, partly to do it my own procrastination and then some other sort of blips along the way, but it's, it's here now, we're good. Um, so the next step with this um, would be to apply next year um, to VTrans, to District 6 for VTrans, for a VTrans Structures Grant. Um, and the applications will come out in February, and then there, the applications will come out to the towns to be sent from VTrans. Um, the town has until April 15th to submit an application. So what we'll be doing is taking the design work, the um, hydraulic charts, et cetera, everything that Nate put together, um, and submitting uh, a grant application to the Vermont Structures Grant uh, through VTrans for the actual uh, implementation of the project. Um, so, um, and I could talk a little bit more about what Nate has suggested. I know um, he did meet with Alfie and um, did take Alfie's concerns about the um, sort of non-practical aspect of a cement box culvert, which is sort of the standard, um, which is what's happening here in the village right now. Um, so they came up with a different plan. Um, so um, so that's kind of an update on that. Um, and obviously, if the select, select board uh, wishes to, we will make uh, and apply for that um, structures grant in the spring. Um, so the other 
part on the agenda. People were just curious about um, the other uh, grant project, road projects that we have out. Um, and I have, I did send an email back in October to everybody, um, and then I resent it um, a couple weeks ago. Um, but I thought I would just go over it in the meeting because there still seem to be some questions about it. So right at the moment, um, the town has um, three uh, grant programs pending that we've been awarded or designated that we've been awarded um, for three different projects. They were going to happen this summer and then the flood happened and all plans for road work got thrown out the window to deal with fixing the roads from the film. But the, these are the grants. Um, so one is uh, a municipal roads general permit grant, um, grants and aid, um, what it's called. Um, this is funded through the state. Um, and so we have a, a, an initial grant for fiscal year 23 for work on the county road. A lot of that work did get done last summer before the flood, um, but it never got finished. And um, we've got an extension on that for finishing the work next summer and getting a report in before the end of the fiscal year. Was that the debt chain, Michael? The, pardon? Was that for debt chain? Well, that's what pretty road? much was happening along county road, yeah. I think there were, might be a couple of culverts that were put in, um, but yeah, yeah, some burn removal yeah. also. Yeah, so that's an extra. Yeah. So that grant was for twenty-seven thousand dollars with a six thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars town match, which is pretty much usually paid for with labor from the road crew, equipment use, rental materials, etc. Um, so that's one, one of the three. Um, and that has been budgeted at least a couple times. Yes. So um, well, then we did get another um, grant and aid award for fiscal year 24, which we're in right now. Um, and that has the, where the work will be done has yet to be determined. Um, but that work would need to be completed with a report completed um, September 30th of 2024. And that grant is for $18,000 with a $4,500 town match. Um, and then the third grant um, road work project that we have pending um, is the East Hill project uh, through a better roads grant. Um, and that's for $14,000 with a $3,500 town match. And the end date for that is um, September 30th, 2024. So um, we had um, picked a spot, sections of road to work on, um, but again, we never really got to them. So, so that's a project waiting to happen. And, and so those are the three. And um, Randy, when we get on Wednesday, we can check the old budgets and make sure that um, yeah, these we are budgeted in. twice. We've We've raised that money twice yeah. Yeah. for the, the time, the match. Okay. Yeah, so I would assume that if we've raised the money already, then that it doesn't need to be in the new budget for fiscal year 25. The match does not. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, any questions about those at all? Uh, are there more grants that we're applying for? These That's up are, to the road crew. These are, well, I'm just <laughs> thinking these are. That's a pretty full slate. It is, it's a lot of work. Yeah, but that's, that's totally, I mean, there is, there will be, by the time next summer rolls around, um, there will be fiscal year 25 grants and aid um, Available. availability. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. and, you know, um, we can look towards the next year. I mean, we can, we'll figure that out. It will be totally up to what the, Road crew wants to, to do. Yeah. How many times can these grants be extended? Twice. Maybe just once. And usually, I mean, we had a, for the county road, the fiscal year 23 grant, um, we had a great excuse. I mean, the flood, uh, there, there were a lot of extensions for, because um, you know, the road crews just had to focus on fixing the roads. Yeah. 
So uh, that's so the only time, and that's the only <coughs> time we've ever asked. Oh, okay. Because my, my next question was going to be, if we ask too many times, do we get put way down onto the ladder? No, you, it's best not to ever be in the position to ask. Okay. In my opinion. Yeah. So the uh, grants and aid thing is a yearly thing, every fiscal year. The others are more special projects. Okay. For the work that's planned for moving the curve on Valley Lake Road, is that something that we either have already applied for a grant for or could apply no, for a that's grant? Not, that's not a grant. It's not a grant. No. There's no grant. That's that's not okay. No. That's unfortunate. That's out of pocket. Ah, okay. I'm going to pay for that one. Yeah, I don't know if a grants and aid project, but if you um, could tell, convince them that you're fixing the erosion on the old part of the road by putting in a new part of the road. <laughs> yeah, it's a I slippery slope. That. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's pretty much everything that I think is on my list on that. Thank you, Michael. Sure. Uh, may we have the road commissioner's report? Please. Thank you all. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Take good care. Uh, so. Thank you, Mr. Larry. Winter's here, as we all know. It's it's been here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, it's right. <laughs> about every Monday. Every Monday. Every Monday. Monday. Yeah. 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 Monday's probably yeah. becoming your favorite day to work. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. It's my favorite day to keep my kids home from school. And not have power. And not have any power. <laughs> have yeah. Any power. yeah. yeah. I, I had power. I never did lose power this Monday. You're Ooh. kidding. No, I was totally So prepared. you're the one. I had everything ready. <laughs> you should have gone to your house. Yeah, you should have. I thought I wasn't going to lose power and I lost it. You did lose it? I didn't. Maybe it's gone when I get home. I don't know. Oh, no. I didn't no, lose no. it this time. Yeah, did did you not? Nope. No. That's great. We lost it, but for a shorter chunk of time. No, not at all. Awesome. That's awesome. Things <laughs> are getting better. <laughs> Yeah, they're all in my driveway. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Larry, please continue. So nothing real major. Uh, we we did do finish the sand pile after Great. working on it after the flood work. I just wanted to focus on that. So that's done. We've completed the contract with gravel construction. Um, and then, so I did talk with um, the town administrator or manager for Hardwick about West Woodbury. Mm -hmm. There was questions last meeting of that, and we are all set. He's they're keeping the price the same. Great. And I don't know, did he send you anything yet? He said he, he, said he was going to do that next day, but that was Friday, and then. So it's coming. He's working on it, uh, but he's he's honoring the same price, and everything is everything is fine there. Um, I I don't know what conditions and of roads and road scheduling means. That's on the agenda, but I, I have an yeah, idea. Um, so Diana's passed me a few comments from people in town who've been complaining that um, you know it's such and such time of day and their road hasn't been plowed yet um, so I, I think it's kind of a question of like what should the expectation be as far as timing goes on you know which which roads well it depends on which road mm -hmm. and it also depends on a lot of what happens in the morning yes uh, we have three trucks. trucks and if didn't really start snowing until like 3 a.m. That's right. Yeah. Well, this morning was challenging because it didn't start until until late, and then it carried on throughout the morning. You guys were out early. I heard a truck go by at like yes. 5. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we started at 4. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one truck got stuck very early in the morning on Keene Farm Road, and so that throws all the routes off. It's not just one route that throws them all off because one mm -hmm. truck has to go in to the rescue of that truck. Mm -hmm. And this morning it was the truck that went there, which was mine, my little one, wasn't enough. So I had, I had to pull the other, the second truck off their route to come and pull it out. And that wasn't enough either. So we Crazy gave sweet. up on it. So now we're now we got three routes that are behind schedule, mm -hmm. but I can't 
I, I could I didn't think I could just stop. You know, I wanted to try to get that truck out and get it rolling, and get it back on. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's how I explained this morning's lateness. But school was already canceled, so that you know uh, that had no bearing on that. Uh, last Monday we were late um, because there was no power, right. and so if there's no power. I can't call anybody. Mm -hmm. I had no power at my house. I didn't, there was no power until I got to the shop where we have a generator. Um, and then, of course, Timmy lives in the woods like the rest of us, and he had no power either. So, I mean, cell phones are great, but if you don't have power or, or Wi-Fi, they're, they're worthless. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I start, call, I start calling the guys at four, and then if I have to drive here to make the phone call, that's a half hour later, and it's a half an hour for them to come. Now you're an hour late getting started. And and I'm not going to sit here and keep making excuses, but that's th these storms that we were getting are not normal storms. They're wet, heavy. And we're not only pushing wet, heavy snow and the mud underneath it, but we're also we have also have limbs falling in our windshield. And we have to keep stopping to push them out. All this takes time. And power lines down. Power lines down. County road. There was a pole snapped off, so that route had to go around. It could mm -hmm. go and only go so far to one way, and then come in the other way, turn around. Again, it all takes time. Um, so I, I mean, I get it. I get the concerns that people want to be out at eight o'clock in the morning. But that, that would be great in the in the best of all worlds. But it's it's these storms are not the typical. They're they're just not. They're our new normal. Though. They are new normal, and that's what we have to get ready for. Correct. Yep. Um, Unfortunately. So yeah, I mean, and, and it's it's all about the timing for these storms too. You know, like Chris said, it start if it starts at three in three the morning, in the morning. Mm -hmm. and it carries on hot and heavy throughout the morning commute. Well, some of those roads aren't going to get treated. That we can't There's be no everywhere way. at the same time. Yep. There's no way. Um, this morning, like I said, we were stuck, so it was continuing to snow. It doesn't stop snowing just because our trucks aren't rolling. And our our roads got covered up again. Um, so we're we're doing the best we can. Um, I I am starting to call the guys a little bit earlier in the morning so that we can get ahead for the buses. Uh, to try to alleviate that. Again, the, the buses are our priority. That's where we spend our time first, and then we go to the secondary roads. Um, does that cover that line? I, I think so, yeah. It, it answered any questions that I have. Yeah, thank you. Okay. How are we on the new truck? Uh, new truck is supposed to land at the body shop. Um, this coming week. Okay. So, so we're, we're still we're still a month and a half or two months off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They well, said they would do it as fast as they can, but there's you know, Well if we land it by February, that would be great. I'm figuring mud season. I'm figuring we'll have it for mud season just yeah. because the, the we're still Everything's having supply chain issues, we're yeah. still having, you know, uh, so Okay. But we did put a bunch of money into the 2013, unfortunately, but it should be ready to carry on. To get carried. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Larry. Sure. Any other questions? There was just the Valley Lake Road curve. Is that, well, the question on here says how much should be budgeted. Is that, um, I think we're going to talk about that more, we right, at to, one of the budget meetings? Yeah, I think we have to do that in a budget meeting. Okay, got it. Because okay. we really don't have a number. Not exactly. I mean, we've got a, we've got a guess. We've got an estimate. Yeah, we have an estimate. We don't. Really but we really don't have a... I think we have to put that off. Yeah, sure. To be honest. I just don't think we know enough. All uh, right. Thank you, Mr. Larrabee. Yeah. Uh, recovery officer's report. Thank you, Ms. Lindsay. I have one. <coughs> Sorry. 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 
So what I what I prepared tonight was this roadmap indicating where we are in uh, this process. So the disaster was declared in July 14. Applicants <coughs> briefing was on this first. We requested. <coughs> Excuse me. We requested to FEMA that we wanted to apply for reimbursement for our funds. We had a kickoff meeting September 7th with FEMA, and we've been doing damage inventories, which are discrete locations in Woodbury where the roads were damaged. So we completed 62 of those. And as it says, the week of uh, December 4th, we started formulating projects. So right now there are five projects which incorporates 32 of the damage inventories. There are five more projects that FEMA has to uh, create, and that would encompass 25 more damage inventories. Mm -hmm. It is a damage inventory that we have to redo, and that focuses on culverts, because culverts, for some reason, are standalone items within FEMA. And even though it's part of a road repair, they want to create a separate project for it. So anyhow, we have to make out a, uh, another damage inventory for that. So we, are we in terms of project completions? We have one project, and that is the Cabot Road project. And that's for a total of $16,000. So, so far we've answered 32 of the 32 questions they require for this particular project. We've completed, of the 12 documents, we've complete, uh, 12 documents we've completed 10. So Danielle and I are hoping to get this project into FEMA tomorrow. Mm. With the complete, totally complete. And uh, we'll see how long FEMA takes to review the project, and then uh, put money against the project so we can start the funds rolling into, into the town. I'm thinking that's going to take anywhere from a month to 45 days. Hmm. So it's, it's a two-stage thing. FEMA has to approve it, then they send the money to the state, and then the, st the state will send the money to us. Okay, and it's similar to the uh, uh, COVID money we got, so Brandy's well aware of that. And I think Brandy and I are sitting in on a meeting tomorrow mm -hmm. at one o'clock. Yep. A webinar. So no more of that. So we have a meeting. We had a meeting last last Tuesday, which was pretty interesting. Uh, FEMA came actually came out to Woodbury and sat down with us, which was okay. pretty nice. Yeah. And we've had a couple of Zoom meetings in the interim, which have lasted three hours, which are just mind-numbing Zoom meetings. And we have another meeting queued up for December 18th. <laughs> because Danielle and I want to get these projects and the essential elements of information completed for these projects by the end of, by the end of January just to get them off our plate. So we're making progress, albeit it, it's glacial. Mm. <laughs> glacial, but uh, they keep me moving the goalposts, so uh, we're kind of used to that by now. So we continue, we're making progress. You know, is it as fast as we would like it? No, but steady. And. Uh, We'll just keep at it. Thank you, Mr. Lizzie. Thank you. A lot of work. Time. We appreciate it. My pleasure. It's fun. <laughs> Doesn't sound fun. Uh, we're going to have to wait on the personnel policy until Diana is here with us. Um, because we can't do that without Diana. Um, so I'll take any other public comment at this point. 
Otherwise, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Um, before we adjourn, I cannot be at the December 27th meeting. Mm -hmm. Tim's having knee surgery that day, so um, I'm sure he's going to be hurting. Um, okay. Can we... So I will be there for the December 27th meeting. make sure that there's two of us. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. Hearing that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I will second the motion. Make you the motion. Make the motion. Oh, we'll make the motion. Yeah, I'll second the motion. Okay. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Oh, that was so quick. We're getting better at this.